Hello, and welcome to the first episode of With Developer Commentary. I thought I'd start with uh, Surgical Strike, a full motion video game, which was released, uh, seems like 1994. I mean, I'm kind of getting uh, different information online. Some people say 93, some say 94. Uh, and we'll get into a, a later version, which I believe was released in 95. We'll talk about that later. So uh, this intro is very similar to another game by Stargate uh, Productions. Um, it's like a helicopter game, also on the Sega CD. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. But um, this is very much a B-style FMV game. I have two copies of it for some reason. Uh, I guess this is what happens when I don't catalog my games. Uh, I found this at a local used game store recently, and they had a case, and I'm trying to collect cases for Sega CD, so I figured, hey, this works out well, too. So at least the second time around, I got the, the booklet in the case. So the, what's interesting, though, is that the case even has an ad for the 32X version, which apparently was never released outside of Brazil, but I'll get into that shortly. Um, Sega seems to have found success in Brazil, as the master system sold very well over there, too. But, unfortunately, Surgical Strike would prove to be the last first-party release for the Japanese Mega CD, though. Um, so it's kind of the end of the life for the, the Mega CD. Um, so, long story short, the UN has approved a Surgical Strike on the stronghold of a Meister, uh, Middle Eastern strongman who's rocket, rocketing civilian targets. Uh, the player's team uh, is sent to heavily armed air hovercraft to stop him. So it says, avoid collateral damage or the game is over. So this is uh, the, the big, you know, ship that I'm supposed to be piloting throughout this mission. Although it, your controls are obviously somewhat limited, um, it's kind of hard to take it seriously because it just looks so tiny. Like I feel like you, you could go up against this with a jeep, and it's not going to uh, give you much resistance. Oh well. So uh, the few actors who do appear in this game went on to do some B-style uh, films and TV shows, except for Marcel Teague, um, who plays the, the major. We don't see him at this point. Um, you go on to play major roles in films like Armageddon, The Rock, and Roadhouse. Uh, Sega16.com has a fantastic article covering this game too, by the way, so I'd encourage you to take a look at that uh, if you have time. So this title also had uh, the true video label. Actually, no, I'll explain what's going on now. So uh, they basically start you off with a top-down map, and you've got to disarm or really destroy the those three missiles. Shoot for the boosters. So they don't really explain it well. I mean, and they just come out flying. I mean, look at this gameplay. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to figure out what's happening here. What am I supposed to hit? I realize um, A shoots my guns. That's marked by 27 in the bottom left corner. B shoots missiles, which is in the middle there. And see what happens here is I essentially have three tanks or three characters I can control. My first tank lost all its health, as notified in the bottom or the middle there, the yellow and green bar. And I've got to figure out where the hell I'm going here. So uh, I've got to hold down C and hit a direction as the prompt appears. Now I've got to shoot down some missiles. I'm waiting, waiting. Oh, I hit B just as I hovered over that red button and now I guess I shot down the missile. I'm just, I mean stuff is shooting at you everywhere, you're not sure what you can hit, what you can't hit. I'm constantly having to hit start so that I can understand where I actually have to, to go. <laughs> okay, I destroyed a tank, that's nice. And see I have to hit start to, to see like, wh what am I doing here? What am I even shooting? Another one of my tanks was taken out, so now I'm down to my third and final tank. But again, they don't tell you how many lives you have at any point. It just moves entirely too fast. So, uh, this game was labeled with uh, True Video, which apparently was a, uh, a whole sub-department of Sega of America that was dedicated to producing original games for the Sega CD. Uh, Christopher Bankstrom, the former executive of Sega's True Video line, remembers this time quite fondly. And I got this from Sega16.com. The best part about being a producer at Sega was that we owned our products once they were approved. We, pro uh, we producers had final say on all matters regarding the product. We had final say from beginning to end, which especially we consider for a lot of the conservative Japanese gaming companies. For an American team to be doing this, that uh, says quite a bit. So before I had read this article, um, I'd always been curious as to what true video actually meant, especially since some of the games 
were created by Digital Pictures. That's um, the large FMV studio at the time was creating games like Night Trap and Double Switch. Um, so I assumed that it belonged to them, but in reality it didn't. Uh, what made me believe otherwise, though, was the fact that uh, some of these titles, including this, were not actually made by Digital Pictures. Soldier, if your brains were made of dynamite, you wouldn't have enough to blow your nose. So, uh, well, you're underground. I got canned over there. I don't know who this guy is. He's just yelling at me now. But somehow those two terrorists with, you know, machine guns are staring at me, shooting me with, you know, machine gun and blows up my entire tank for the most sophisticated uh, assault vehicle the world has ever known. I mean, it doesn't seem too, too crazy. So in terms of controls, uh, full motion video games are obviously very simple and this is no exception. Uh, like I said before, I start with the top down map and I'm constantly having to hit start so that I know where to go. Here, the screen is just kind of guiding itself. I can hold C right there and hit up, down, left, or right, and I'll determine where I have to go. Um, it really comes off as like a B-style action flick. Um, it cost $2 million to make in 1994. I mean, that's, that's not bad. Uh, granted, only three years later, we'd have Final Fantasy VII, or actually, I think it was 96 it was released in Japan, and that cost $45 million to make. Um, but, I mean, this just really comes across as B-style movie. I can deal with some, some B-stuff in my full motion video games, but uh, this one just doesn't seem to be self-aware, whereas many other games um, clearly are. Uh, another limitation, though, is that uh, the Sega CD can only draw 64 colors on screen. So despite this actually being probably one of the better and clearer looking Sega CD titles, um, it still you know, kind of doesn't, doesn't look very well. Um, the 32X add-on, which uh, a handful of full motion video games were released on, um, actually looked much, much clearer. And as far as I could tell, the 32X version of Night Trap um, was the clearest one. So the game is brutally difficult. I tried several times to get through this, and uh, it just was not working out for me. Um, I kept running out of um, ammo, so you see I'm down to my last uh, missile I've got to go after here. I've only got seven bullets left and eight rockets, but... You're not really told as to when you should use rockets or bullets. I mean, you would think, right, on these... Like, where did these guys come from? You would think on, you know, the people, you'd use guns and rockets on the tanks, but it doesn't matter. It's the same effect either way. Um, I just got so frustrated playing this that after a while I, I had to, to give up. You got a very repetitive gameplay. And, see, my character dies, and then all of a sudden I start off in front of these terrorist guys again. Um, who just completely destroy my health. What I did find actually pretty interesting about this was the fact that it was able to load the scene so quickly. Sega CD had very, very limited RAM. And you're reading this off of a um, single speed disk or, or disk drive. So I'm, I'm not quite sure how they're able to get all this um, to read so, so quickly. I ported uh, Night Trap to the browser, so HTML5, uh, about nine months ago, and, and even getting the browser to um, quickly read video was a bit of a project. So uh, visually, probably one of the better looking FMV games, uh, and, and even, you know, pretty technically sound. So I'm wrapping up over here, I've only got uh, about a minute left of this actual game. But I, I feel like it just goes entirely too fast. So here's a missile. Or maybe it wasn't a missile. There's just something on the ground I'm shooting. Stinger, this is uh. Eagle 5. We're getting a strong transmission signal from the town hall. Possible missile launch control center. Search and destroy. Okay. So now it looks like I'm looking for the, the town hall in the middle there. Oh, I've got no health. This is my last tank. drive a nail, let alone a hovercraft. That's U.S. government property you're wrecking out there, boy. And that's it. Hey, now they have me starting over. We're all in this together. Not what I want to be doing. Well, that's all I've got for this episode, so be sure to join me on the next one.